So Kara wrote the story, and I think that's great, uh, about Brendan Eich resigning. Uh, he was one of the creators of Mozilla, one of the founders of Mozilla, and had been tapped by the board uh, to become CEO not, well, not so long ago, like a week ago, right? About three weeks ago. Three weeks ago. Uh, almost instantly, three members of the board resigned. There was a Twitter. Though, though some say that was they were already planning to resign. Well, they didn't so, deny that uh, it had to do John with Ike. He came out on the record in the New York Times this weekend saying that he did resign because of the Ike. Yeah, yeah. okay. They, it, yeah, I mean, there wasn't any attempt to, to separate the two events. There was a... No, there was. Oh, there was? Uh, there was... Yeah, there was some kind of fuzziness around it. I mean, particularly yeah. because John Lilly was the former CEO. Gary Kovacs was the former CEO. Maybe it was time for them to yeah, move on as right. they're naming a new one. There's like some plausible reasons, but Lilly actually did say, yeah. or he was quoted as saying in the New York Times, I um, would, didn't want to be involved when he was CEO. The controversy is over uh, the fact that he, uh, Ike, donated $1,000 to Prop 8, which was the anti-gay marriage initiative that passed in California. Uh, that became uh, public only because the databases are public, as they should be um, in, uh, in this country. And uh, so you can see who gave money to what. Um, okay, Cupid kind of took the most extreme point of view by forbidding people using Firefox to use their site. No, they didn't forbid you. They they put up a pop up suggesting you use something else. Well, they Sorry. didn't. They didn't lock you out. They just said don't use it. Yeah. Oh, all right. They're calling this clicktivism, which is a terrible word. Um, oh, I I misunderstood. I thought that you couldn't use Firefox. So they really just took it as an opportunity to, to raise the issue, and and then you can move on. Yeah, plenty of people have done that. They've you know said. Oh, you might want to come back with a more modern browser. Not usually over political issues, right. but in this case, similar to that. Yeah. Um, on uh, March 28th, Ike blogged. He was sorrow at having caused pain. Um, he did not, however, uh, say, I now support gay marriage. Um, I don't know what, Jeff, I... You put me on the spot because I don't know what don't to know. say about and then, this. And then afterwards, Andrew Sullivan, um, obviously well-known gay political writer, argued that that gays had basically put a head on a stake and this was going to be bad for the cause of gay rights. Uh, Mark Andreessen, who had worked with him at um, uh, uh, the browser company, That's obviously... Good. Thank you very much. See, age, Les, don't get old, I'm telling you. Uh, <laughs> and Netscape uh, said uh, that this was, you know, uh, uh, going too far. Uh, Josh Marshall wrote a very interesting column today saying, listen, nobody has a right to be a CEO, and a CEO is a different job. And he said if somebody just plucked out somebody from, from a federal agency and said, we don't like what you, you say, you're fired, that wouldn't work. But it, but but if, if a... If the head of, if a cabinet member came out with a co with a controversial view like this, then people would understand saying you got to go. Well, there, there's legitimate concern if you're a, in the LGBT community that maybe you're not going to get treated well at Mozilla uh, in a, under uh, Ike. Uh, right, which he, I, think, I think is a legitimate concern. He, well, he made hand, a point of posting, a, what, what, believe it or not, it, it, I mean, I don't, I don't know whether this is sufficient, but he made a post on the blog saying, uh, you know, I'm, I'm committed to equality in everything we do. I want to work with the LBG, LGBT community, um, et cetera, et cetera. Maybe that wasn't enough. It does feel a little like a witch hunt, I got to say. That's, that's the yeah, issue. Yeah, I think that it's, it, there's a couple things going on here that are important. One is that Mozilla is not just any company. They're a community of activists that work together on a nonprofit, all contributing, and they have this... They have this kind of radical openness of a culture where they actually encourage employees to criticize their CEO on Twitter if they feel like criticizing them. That even wouldn't be the case other places. So I think it's less about um, feeling like you wouldn't be treated well at work and more about feeling like you're on this mission-driven um, line of work. And um, if your CEO has a, a closed-minded approach to something that's crucial to how you define your values, that's it's hard to reconcile that with the notion of openness. But, but Liz, and, and, and you know, number one, I'm 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 resolutely in favor of gay marriage resolutely against the proposition uh, and, and agree with you what you just said. The, the, the question then becomes, though, where are the lines? What are the right. and, and I'm sorry, this this fits in with the Kevin Rose story, 
Because mm-hmm. at some point, if you become dogmatic and don't allow other voices or other ways to view the world, then you have an issue of openness. And, and mind you, I couldn't disagree more with Ike stand on this issue. But it's his and right to do it. At some point, at some point, <sighs> isn't it? Uh, it, 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 it it's is. okay. It he, he, he should be allowed to have his opinion. Yeah. Should it cost him his job is the question. And then you make a good point, which is his job is in an, a very, you know, an open source project. It's an open community and he's and he'd be managing gay employees. Should he be, you know, would, would he be fair and equal to them? I, I believe he would have been. Yeah, I think and that there's also like, this a- aspect of the, the witch hunt is moving faster than ever, right? Like this online discussion is moving yeah, faster. But true. also the discussion about this particular issue, um, you know, eight years, what, sorry, 2008, so six years ago, um, Proposition 8 passed in California. A majority of people right. who voted voted yes on Proposition 8. Um, and that's basically equivalent to, I mean, it's a little bit more to give money to it, but he was on the side of the majority six years ago. So yes, the online witch is moving faster than ever, but also the, you know, the which is the right and which is the wrong side of history is moving faster than ever as well. Exactly. And so really you're living well in that new dynamic. And, and, and that's what D- Josh Marshall's point, which I think was a good one, that says that the victors in a moral war need to give the losers the chance to come in time. And and, and, and I think that's true. I think, I think that the, the victory of gay and lesbian LGBT communities about these issues was magnificent. And you're right, Liz, swift. So swift that some take time to catch up. And so President Obama himself had to catch up on this issue. He was, it was not that long ago right. at all that he said, I'm all for gays, but I'm against this marriage thing. Right. And he had to catch up. And the, the, I guess the issue and very for Ike similarly, was, I actually he wasn't making up, his yeah. effort to catch up. By the way, exactly the same not. year. Yeah. Yes. When he was elected, yeah. And Meg Whitman, who I think is maybe an even better comparison because she's the Republican CEO of a technology company um, and a former candidate as a Republican for governor of California, she said in uh, February that she had changed her mind and now is in support of gay marriage. But it's even, let's, you know, we're talking about people, you know, coming around and sure, let's say he doesn't. And like Jeff, I have to say, I'm very much in favor of gay marriage. So that's not even the issue. But the guy was not like a, a, an incredibly militant person, it seems. He, he wasn't, where, the issue is not that he was at rallies, that he was trying to raise money, that he was, he just gave a thousand dollars for a cause that he thought he was, you know, falling on one side of, of the issue. Uh, and if he is being, uh, uh, he's being stigmatized for it in this way, six or, you know, six years later, He's being stigmatized for an idea that, yes, is not very, you know, is probably going against the openness that the, the, the company Mozilla wants to promote. But it's still very concerning that he's being stigmatized like this and not just stigmatized, you know, forced out for the extent of what he did, which doesn't seem uh, to warrant that kind of ire. Yeah, Patrick, I think, yeah. I think, I think the, the, as we're, as we're going to argue more and more and more about protecting the internet for the sake of free speech, then we have to decide as, as an internet culture what that means. What, what is the level of tolerance that we have about different opinions? Um, and I consider it a wrong opinion, flat out. But sure. um, at some point, you know, you defend the rights of others to have those opinions. We defend the notion, you know, we make fun of Erdogan for getting rid of, for, for shutting down Twitter and YouTube because of opinions he doesn't like. Did the militant side of Mozilla shut down Ike for an opinion they don't like. And I don't like that opinion either, but we have to decide what is the culture of free speech on the net. I've been taking a lot of, of, I, we've had this issue very recently uh, about gay marriage in uh, in France, and uh, unbelievably, it became an issue in France. I thought it wasn't going to be. I thought it was, you know, just you weird Americans that would make this an issue. <laughs> um, but um, and I've been taking a little bit of crap, but we've had a, an open da- dialogue with with my followers and and the people who want to discuss this issue, and. That's exactly the problem, uh, Jeff, what you're saying. We have to be tolerant of other people's ideas. And he's not going around. I think that's what I was uh, uh, trying to emphasize in in what I said earlier. You know, he's not uh, running around drowning puppies or strangling people. You know, he he just expressed his idea. Yes, a little bit. What if it were racism? What if he'd... 
Good question, Leo. Well, you know, I mean, uh, I always try to define it in those terms because, uh, and the reason I do is because um, t as times change, uh, bigotry and, and uh, changes. Sure. And so it's now pretty well accepted that if you don't like somebody because of the color of their skin, well, that's clearly wrong. And I think we're rapidly moving to that situation for people, uh, if you don't like people because of who they love. Mm. You're, there's some, that we, we now know that that's wrong. But we're catching up on that. What if it were racism, which was kind of widely agreed that's a problem? I think there would be no question if, he, if there were some smoking gun that said in an email sure. in 2008, you know, I don't think we should hire black people at, uh, at uh, Mozilla. He would be out. He wouldn't have been well, considered. Here's, here's the question, well, Leo. That's not even what, what he said, Leo. He's not, he didn't say, I don't oh, think... Oh, okay, you're right, you're right. People. I don't think black people should be allowed to wear, marry white people. What if he'd said no, that? What, what if he'd said yeah, that? No, that's let, 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 make it analogous here. What if he had said that in 1965? Yes, and I think that we did, in fact, after the Civil Rights Act, after uh, finally integration came to this country and we still have a long way to go, I think we did forgive a lot of people uh, for... <laughs> Not George Wallace, maybe, but a lot of people uh, for racism. I think we recognize that times had changed and people had come along. Now, Ike has never repudiated his point of view. He still, for all we know, still has that point of view. Well, that's the other issue. Is I thought about that, too. You know, what if he'd said, well, I changed my mind? Mm -hmm. But then... That means the mob made him change his mind to keep him. He, yeah, keep his job. I think it was the original act. But I, not to be the stickler in here, but one other point that came out in reporting is that, at least according to the folks who are talking about it, which is which is not Ike except for a very brief blog post, um, Mozilla contends that they did not ask him to step down. He they asked down. him to not serve as CEO, oh. and uh, and he decided he needed to leave the company. Um, so I thought it was an interesting distinction of him. Um, he was ultimately the one who kind of ran from uh, the furor that he'd ignited. Yeah, but if you, okay, but if you'd been asked to step down as CEO uh, after three weeks, you probably would leave the company, right? I mean, you're not going to stick around. That, I don't Well, he'd been there for 15 years yeah. as in a senior technical and, role. And the thing to point out, he was a senior technical guy. He was one of the creators. He was not just some guy off the street. I mean, if they brought in Chainsaw Al Dunlop, It'd be right, different. That was Josh Marshall's point that it's different to be part of it to rather than be the figurehead. Right. He was a founder. Oh, and Josh said that that means that you have a higher standard. Is that right? As CEO. Yeah. That's a tough one. I don't know.